Hi you guys, what's up? My name is Allie and I'm at home right now and thought I would do a little sit down video talking about exactly how to make your first 10 sales in 10 different ways. Um, yeah, I just wanted to sit down and talk with you guys. If you hear some whistling, it is my door. It's super windy out and the doors whistle really loud. It's super annoying. Um, let's see, the lighting's kind of blowing me out. <laughs> Maybe I'll sit this way. Um, let's see if I could prop you up on something. Oh my God, it's so loud. Can you hear that? It's crazy. All right, let me move my coffee table actually. Okay, so I'm all settled here. I have my little list of notes, but before I even dive into the things that you can do to make your first 10 sales, you need to have some things set up for your online business. So the first thing that you need to do as soon as you know that you're 100% into the business and that you're starting an online store of any sort is to go onto social media and set up an Instagram account for sure, set up a Facebook account. Those are the two that I swear by. You can also set up Pinterest or Twitter, things like that. And then you also wanna be collecting emails. This is gonna be really helpful for one of the tips that I have to give you guys. Um, if you talk to somebody and they're interested in your store, say, hey, let me grab your email from you. I can send you, you know, like a, a little coupon or some pictures of things we're getting in. And you wanna start compiling a list of emails. Um, okay, so you definitely need your social media and you definitely need great product that people are going to want to buy. You need to know your, who your target market is. If you have, you know, ugly clothes or weird things online that nobody wants, none of these tips are gonna be helpful to you. So you have to have a product that you stand behind and that you know your customers are gonna love and that they're going to want to buy from you because your store has some sort of unique edge or customers can relate with your vibe or, you know, just things like that. Make sure the product that you're selling is cool <laughs> and that people wanna buy it. Um, I think that everything that I carry in my store is so cute and I feel like it appeals to a lot of people and I'm really um, proud of the things that I carry. I love everything that we have. There's certain things that I wouldn't wear but I still buy because I know my customers will wear. I really feel like I have a good handle on who my customer is and the type of clothing that they expect to buy from my store and see in shop or online. Um, and yeah, so I'm just gonna hop right into it and the first thing that you can do to make one of your first sales for your store is to ask a family member. It sounds so simple, but so many people don't do this. Like you gotta swallow your pride and ask your mom, ask your sister, ask your grandma, whoever you know in your personal close life that like really is gonna support you no matter what you do. Um, I know that my mom was one of my first sales. I actually sent her the package and got her feedback on how the checkout process was. She spell checked me like crazy when I first opened the store, which was awesome because I have never really been good with punctuation or spelling and stuff like that. I'm good at spelling, but like punctuation and certain grammar things, um, I could always use a second eye on like what I write. So not only is it a way to make your first sale by just straight up asking your family, it's a great way to get their feedback. And if you're anything like me, I'm really stubborn. I don't like people telling me how to run my business. My mom always makes fun of me about how stubborn I am. And um, it's a good thing because I know what I want and I'm like direct when it comes to my business, but it's hard for me to like open up my ears sometime and like soak in the advice. and. I've learned the hard way, like my mom, she's always right and um, she has a lot of good advice. She was a business owner, she used to own a spa but she ended up selling it to her business manager. But having a family member or like a best friend actually go through the checkout process even if they're sitting right next to you and you could obviously just like give them the item for cash, it's really important to have them go through the whole process. So this brings me to my second tip and the second tip is to reach out to a social media influencer. So like I said before, you gotta have your Instagram set up. Hopefully you'll have a good amount of followers. Um, in the early stages of having Instagram, it's really important to engage with your customer. If they say, oh, cute shoes, right back to them. You know, Let them know that you heard them and that you're an actual person behind your Instagram account. Uh, Instagram is turning more into this like algorithm type of thing to where when you post something you got to have engagement on it right away or else it kind of 
fades into the background. It doesn't pop up as much um, like on the Discover page and on other people's Instagram feeds. So it's really important to have an audience that's that's well engaged, if that makes sense. Um, so this is something that I did when I first opened my online store. It helped me so much. I would reach out to social media influencers, people that had a really good following, but I wouldn't have to pay a bunch of money. I don't, I didn't pay any money to any social media influencers in the beginning. And sometimes I still don't, I don't really do this anymore. Cause I had a couple of annoying experiences that made me not really want to, um, do it anymore, but it, it really does help your business in the smaller stages when you're first starting off. So I would find a girl that had anywhere from, uh, 20,000 to 100,000 followers and I would directly message her on Instagram. I would say, hi, my name's Allie. I'm the owner of Nomad Boutique and I love your vibe. I think that my clothing would look great on you and that you would love it. I would love to send you a dress for free or something of your choosing for free on my website in exchange for you taking, sorry, my phone just keeps blowing up. Um, I would love to send you a dress uh, in exchange for you taking a photo in it and posting it on your Instagram, please make sure that you tag my store so all of your followers can see the item that I sent you. Um, and I had a lot of people that were really excited to get free clothing and to go out there and make content. Um, their job is to make content and what a better way than to take a, you know, cute, fashionable picture wearing something new. Mm. One thing that I can say with, um, doing this is that you have to be very clear and the things that you need from these social media influencers. When I first started, I would just send them a message like I said, but now if I were to do this again, I'd be very clear because there were a few times where I sent like a couple girls a bunch of clothes because they took like amazing pictures on their Instagram and had a lot of, you know, really engaged customer, I mean, um, followers and they would like send me a picture back like let's say I send them this cardigan and it'd be like an up close shot and it'd be like it'd be like one little square inch of the thing that I sent them with like a blurred background and it was like a beautiful portrait picture but you know their followers can see my clothing so um, be very clear ask for a full body shot to where you can clearly see the garment if there's um, competing boutiques in the area that you know this influencer works with Ask them that you be the only person featured in their post um, because another time I sent clothes to these girls and they set up a whole photo shoot that we worked hard on and they had like my main competitor boutiques like a uh, cardigan and hat and they like tagged them and I was like so I basically just like paid for her advertising too like oh no I don't want to do that um, so asked to be the only one featured in a post another thing that has happened is that I asked them to tag my store in their photo and they'll tag like a hundred other tags so mine doesn't really stand out. Just be clear because you're sending somebody something for free and they can either agree to it or not agree to it. There's so many people out there on Instagram who want free stuff that have an incredible audience that um, could be your potential customers. So reach out to a social media influencer, send them something for free, Make maybe make them like a discount code. Um, for example, you could ask them to caption it, uh, Nomad Boutique is opening tomorrow. Uh, use my discount code Allie for 20% off of your whole purchase or something like that. So then, you know, you can have all their customers really excited that your store is gonna be opening tomorrow and boom, you can get your first sale like right off the ground. With all this being said, don't be uh, down on yourself. Don't be, you know, like don't give up because when I first opened my store, I made sales on the first day and it was so exciting. I like wanted to cry every time my phone was going off, but it may not happen in the first day for you. It's, I had months where like I wouldn't sell one thing in a whole month and I just wanted to give up, but I slowly learned from my mistakes and learned from others and learned how to better my business. And I hope that this is helping you guys. I really want you guys to like go for your dreams, just not near my store. <laughs> Don't open any competing businesses near near me. Um, but yeah. Okay. So number three. This goes back to what I first said in the beginning. So you're going to want to access your newsletter. This is going to be email addresses that you have collected. I use MailChimp to send mass emails. You should definitely look into it. I'll link that down below. Um, but you're going to want to send out emails to the addresses that you have and you can say, 
I'm launching my online store tomorrow in celebration of that. I'm gonna be offering 20% off of um, your entire purchase to anyone subscribed to this newsletter or something like that. You can just send them a discount code so they'll hopefully purchase on the first day that you open. You can say the discount code is only good for that day. Um, another thing that you can do is you can send people free gifts for making a purchase. I'll do it every once in a while. I'll say for the rest of the day until midnight hits, every single online order will be receiving a small gift item. Um, I usually send jewelry or other things that I know will fit people. It's hard to send like a free dress or a free top because it's not always going to fit. So jewelry is usually a good pick or like an accessory, something that, you know, doesn't need to be sized. Just make an incentive for people to purchase from you. Like wouldn't you want to purchase so much more from a store that was going to give you a free gift item on their opening day rather than just what you ordered? Of course. So, um, yeah. That's about it for that idea. So the next thing you can do, idea number four, I think, I've lost count, is to host a contest or a giveaway. Um, you can say anyone who reposts a picture wearing one of your purchases from my store will receive a $100 gift card. I will be choosing somebody at the end of this month. So that will encourage people to buy and take pictures and tag your store so all of their friends can see your store. It just kind of like, widens the bubble of your store um widens the what's it called exposure or you know what i'm saying um another idea is you can give away you know for the first 10 orders tomorrow i will be giving away a small gift item in each bag um just little things like that anything that ties to making a purchase and encourages your customer gives them incentive to purchase from you is always a great thing um moving on so the next thing I have is to get involved with your customer, engage with them. Before you open, anybody that follows you and leaves a comment on your Instagram, make sure it's your authentic thoughts and feelings, but write back to them. Uh, make your customer feel like they have a personal relationship with your store. I feel like there's so many people that are loyal customers to our store because they um, love communicating with us through Instagram and they always say how much they're buying to you know their friends and they take pictures in the clothing. They know that we'll repost them sometimes. We love to feature our customers on our Instagram and they love to be featured. Um, but it's all about engagement with your customer. Make them feel special. You know, you should appreciate them. They're the ones that are putting money into your wallet and making your dreams come true. I truly have so much love for my customers and um, I want to, you know, make them feel appreciated and let them know that I'm truly thankful for them supporting my dream, supporting my store, whether they know it or not. A lot of people think that, you know, you're just some big company and there's not an individual behind each business um, with these smaller boutiques, but it's so good when a customer can realize that and realize that there's somebody that cares on the other end and that there's like a personal connection with you in their store. I mean, your store and them. Um, I'm so tired, I need some coffee. Mm. But just make sure that you're engaged with them and that you're authentic to yourself. Don't be fake. Um, just, you know, talk to your customers. That's such a great way for them to make their second purchase, third purchase. It's so hard to get repeat customers online. Okay, so this next idea is something that I have never done, but I am going to be looking into doing this to my online store because the more exposure for your online store, the better. And I have kind of just recently discovered this and I've seen that a lot of other smaller boutiques, um, like the size of my two stores, are doing this. Basically, you connect your online store to another marketplace. This can be uh, Amazon or Google Shopping, for example. So you basically somehow connect your online store to uh, Amazon. So when somebody goes on to Amazon.com and they search for purple polka dot dress, which nobody should wear, <laughs> like they search for uh, black cardigan, yours would be one of the you know thousands of black cardigans that pop up. Uh, I don't know how well this works for other people, but so many stores have sworn by this, so I'm definitely going to be looking into this, and I'll let you guys know what I think. Um, sorry, I'm like squirming away from the camera. My legs are totally asleep right now. Um, so yeah, try connecting to Amazon and Google Shopping. 
Um, you know, when you click on, like you Google search something, there's images and then there's shopping. If you ever click the shopping, it's just a bunch of links that bring you to other stores, which I've used hundreds of times and it's stupid that I don't have my store set up like that. So I'm gonna be doing that and I'll let you guys know if that works, if I see any more um, traffic to my online store or anything like that. So this next idea is something that I feel is good to be aware of and to understand, but with that being said, a lot of people are veering away from this older method. It's called SEO, search engine optimization, and uh, you should all go on to your computers right now and Google that and look up the definition and the terms and what it means. It's important for your online store, but I feel like with social media, that really is the keys to go social and uh, funnel a lot of your sales through your social media accounts like I do. Um, but if you want to, you know, touch on all ends of what you can do to make your store successful, look into search engine optimization. You're basically using keywords on your website that when people search on Google, it'll make your website pop up ahead of thousands, millions of others. I personally have not done this, but I figured I would include it in the list because I don't want to leave anything out. But I did want to talk about it briefly. Just because I haven't done it doesn't mean that you shouldn't check it out. I'm trying as hard as I can to make my store great, but there's things that I could be doing that I'm not. So check it out. Let me know if you guys have any luck with that because I've never really like delved into SEO. So this next thing is a great alternative if you're not making any sales online. It's a good way to see what people really think of your product. You can set up a pop-up booth somewhere like at a non-competing business. A hair salon would be great if you're a clothing boutique. It's gonna be the same type of customers probably that are gonna be shopping with your online store. Um, you can offer a sale. You can say I'm gonna be, you know, make a big event out of it. Get your, the other business owner involved. You can let them pass out drinks and snacks and stuff and you know, maybe they can have a braid bar while you have your pop-up shop or something like that. Offer, you know, a special that people can't normally get for both businesses um, that will hopefully get like one sale under your belt. So those are my ideas and I just wanna say do not give up. It is so easy to want to give up when you're not making any money and you just invested a bunch of money into this business. Uh, also, listen to the feedback of your friends. If, if they don't like what you're selling or somebody has something to say, try to soak up the advice as painful as it can be sometimes. If you're not making any sales, it's probably what you're selling or how your website looks or the prices that they're being offered at. You just really need to look at your competition, know who you're selling to, sell amazing product that you can stand behind yourself that you know your customers are gonna love, and yeah. And yeah, that's the rest of my video. Um, Jessica, my little goldie puppy, has come to say hello. This is Jessica. <laughs> you guys, she used to be a, such a small little puppy and she's huge now. But thank you so much for watching my video. It's so great to talk with you guys and I truly appreciate all of you for subscribing. I'm over 5,000 subscribers now. Like. That's crazy, it's so exciting to me. I love making these videos and without you guys watching, it would be possible. So thank you so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.